Hey everyone, we are live at five here at Broadway.com. It is Friday. Thank God it's Friday. <laughs> December 7th, 2018. In case you don't know what year it is. I'm Paul Wontor. I'm Andy Lefkowitz. And over there is Caitlin Moynihan. Hello. And today we have one of the four stars of the fantastic new American play, American Son. Who's Ooh. here? Eugene Lee is here. Yes. Ooh. Fantastic. Terrific actor. Had a great career. So we're going to talk all about it. But first, today's top five. This news is music to our ears. I like that. I like Thank that. You. So we got the Grammy nominations this morning, and the ones that are most notable to theater folks are what we're going to talk about right now. So the uh, best musical theater album nominees are, I guess, no big surprises in there, but The Band's Visit was nominated, mm -hmm. Carousel, My Fair Lady, Once on This Island, and Jesus Christ Superstar Live in Concert. Uh, so that's a, a really solid group of nominees there. Yeah. In addition to that, uh, The Greatest Showman received a nomination for Best Compilation Soundtrack for Visual Media. Uh, Benj Pasek and Justin Paul, Tony-winning songwriters, uh, received a nomination for the song This Is Me from Greatest Showman. Uh, Tony nominee Bradley Cooper was nominated alongside Lady Gaga for Record yes. of the Year for the song Shallow from A Star Is Born. Uh, Frozen songwriters Kristen Anderson Lopez and Bobby Lopez were nominated for the song Remember Me from Coco. And Barbara Streisand was nominated for her album The Music, The Mem, Apostrophe, Rees, and The Magic. <laughs> you know what drives me crazy about yeah. the Grammys? I hate to bring down the room. Yeah. But like yes. the, the, the timing of when things are eligible is always confusing. Yeah. Because like Coco was nominated for an Oscar a year Last ago. Last year. And yeah. same like with Greatest Showman. Ago. It doesn't. Right. And now this will be the it's Grammy. True. It's weird. It's true. And we were talking about it earlier because we were saying, was Pretty Woman eligible this year, the album? I don't know I, what the dates are. Yeah. Depends. It must Probably be not, next actually. Year. I think right. September. I want to say September is the okay. Oh, I don't know for sounds sure. Right. But sure. Uh, regardless, the Grammy but Awards. Congrats to everyone. Yeah. Yeah. To be <laughs> it's it's actually cool. Uh, I like the musical theater album award because they always take a select group of actors who also receive. Well, that's nominees. new though. It, it's new. It's because new Kristen and Adina years. didn't get Grammys for right. Wicked, but I like to think of them as Grammy. Yeah, winners. but it's just it's kind of cool. Like Etai Benson and Adam Cantor received nominations along with. Katrina Lang and Ariel Statchel for Band's Visit. It's the principal um, soloist. So, yeah, so it's kind of a neat thing that cool. um, these actors have Grammy noms. The Grammys take place on February 10th, 2019. And these two friends are opening up a new shift. So Waitress is a big hit on Broadway. It and it was written by Sarah Bareilles. Did you guys know that? Oh, yeah. She got a Tony nomination for that. She's been in the show twice before playing Jenna, and now she is returning again January 7th through February 3rd. It's again her third run. But this time, she's bringing uh, friend Gavin Creel Ooh, with her yes. uh, as her love interest. So this is interesting because Gavin Creel, I believe, was actually recorded all the demos of Waitress years ago. They've been friends forever. Ooh. And so he, he this is something that uh, didn't, was not that surprising because I know it was probably just like a text. Like, I wish I could see that text conversation. Like, hey, Gav. What are you doing in January? <laughs> Do you want to come in with me? Yeah, I can see that. So anyway, it's going to be awesome. Nicolette, Nicolette Robinson is currently there, mm -hmm. and she's fantastic. She leaves on December 9th. Is that like Sunday. tomorrow? It's Sunday. Sunday. That's Sunday. just Sunday. Yeah. Happy final weekend, Nicolette. Yeah. Uh, and Drew Galing, we don't know when he's ending yet, but there'll be a little bit of a gap. But anyway, Sarah and Gavin are coming on January 7th. It'll be great. Gavin just won a Tony Award for Hello, Dolly, of course. And um, he was nominated for Hair and Millie and... We're all into this. Thumbs yeah, up. Cannot wait. And a current Broadway star has a new gig on screen. So this was kind of unexpected, but it's certainly cool. Uh, Daniel Radcliffe, who's mostly known for kind of his big starry turn in all of the Harry Potter films, and has kind of made a name for himself on Broadway. Right now, he's appearing in Lifespan. Kind of. He has kind like of. 12 Broadway.com Audience Choice Awards. A <laughs> Amen, man. It's true. And he's in Lifespan of a Fact right now, giving a phenomenal performance. He is going to start in a new TV series with TBS. Uh, at, it's called Miracle Workers, mm -hmm. and he's going to play an angel in this series. He's co-star, uh, pardon me, co-starring with Steve Buscemi. Did I pronounce that correctly? Yeah, okay. yeah. Buscemi. Cool. Yeah. Buscemi, yeah. Steve Buscemi is playing God. Daniel Radcliffe is playing one of his angels who's been assigned to help two people fall in love. So this is going to be 
seven it's, it's going to be awesome. Yeah, it's going to be awesome, and it's going to only play for a seven-episode run uh, beginning on February 12th on TBS. Cool. So, yeah, go Daniel Radcliffe. And this gala has announced a trio of new stars. Yeah, so they're doing this South Pacific concert. Uh, it is for Broadway Dreams, the not-for-profit performing arts training organization. And we talked about it before uh, because... Previously announced, Carmen Cusack, Alex Newell, Daft Urban Vega, Jose Lana, Isabel McCalla, Morgan James, and Kareem Suleiman. And now, Edna Spinoza, yes. Aaron Dilley, and Grammy-winning soprano Isabel Leonard will now appear. Um, and this is all happening on Monday, I believe, right? It is, yeah. Uh, the evening will open with remarks from Pulitzer Prize-winning immigrant rights activist Jose Ant- Antonio Vargas. And this is new interpretations of the Roger Hammerstein's classics by Stephen Jamal, who's a very talented music director. And this is happening at the Roof Ballroom at the St. Regis, Monday night at 7 o'clock. And it's honoring, isn't it like honoring the anniversary? It is. 70th anniversary. It is 70th anniversary of South Pacific. Gotta love those musicals. And this world premiere musical officially has its cast. So it's actually a world premiere drama. Drama. But it's music to our ears. Or there we go. Like All right. Say. You fixed yeah. it. Thanks. <laughs> I got you your back, fixed girl. It. Yeah. So uh, this new play called Something Clean is making its world premiere with Roundabout Underground mm. off Broadway. And we found out casting today. A really great group of stars. It's a three-person cast. Uh, Catherine Irby is going to play the lead. You guys might know her from Law & Order Criminal Intent, but she's also a Tony nominee. Uh, Daniel Jenkins, who I'm a big nerdy fan of. because From he Big the Musical? Big the Musical. And before that, what... Big River. Thank you. And most recently... Something else? He was in Oslo. He was in uh, the ensemble oh, right. of Oslo on Broadway. And he's so super talented. And I love the big cast album. Um, anyway, he's going to be in this, and Christopher Livingston, who is an off-Broadway veteran, is also going to be in it. Uh, and the play is about a woman, played by Catherine Irby, who's uh, struggling with putting her family back together after a crisis. Uh, this will start on May 4th, 2019, at the Black, Black Box venue at the Seinberg Center off-Broadway. Awesome. Yeah. Thank you so much, Andy. Are you seeing any theater this weekend? Uh, oh, my gosh, yeah. I'm seeing Clay Aiken and Ruben Sutter tomorrow <gasps> yes! night. Do you know the title of it by heart? Uh, You know what, man? It's a super long title, so I don't know. There's too many adjectives. Yeah, but something with Hanukkah, right? Yeah. Well, have fun. Yeah, I'm super. What are you seeing this weekend? Nothing. I'm in my bed. I need to get some sleep. Oh, my gosh. First, I'm excited to talk to Eugene Lee. Yes. Hey, Caitlin, tell everyone about Eugene. Gladly. So, yes, we have Eugene Lee in the studio with us today. He's currently on the Broadway in American Sun. Fun fact, he's considered a Wilsonian warrior for his many appearances in the works of August Wilson, including the Broadway production of Gem of the Ocean, which is his other Broadway uh, work. Uh, he, he's performed in five of Wilson's plays, five of Wilson's ten plays at the Kennedy Center in Washington, D.C., and he t- taped the PBS recording of all ten plays in the Century Cycle, as well as August Wilson's final autobiographical autobiographical you can do it. one man piece I can make it through how I learned what I learned he most recently appeared in independent film Thunder Road winner of the best narrative feature award at the South by Southwest Film Festival this year congratulations follow the show at American Sun Play on all social media to stay up to date on what Eugene's doing and his other three co-stars what's going on and leave all of your questions in the comments down below please welcome Eugene and Paul hello sir Hello, how you doing? Thanks for coming in. I love your voice. So commanding. It's an old radio voice, if you know what I mean. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, How's it going over at American Play? American American Sun. Sun. An American Play, American Sun. It is an American Sun. Uh, It is a fantastic play that I feel like is really making an impact on audiences, which must be exciting to know that you're really, like, getting people. It's it's, it's great. I'm really proud to be a part of this. This is an important play, and I think everybody ought to see it. Actually, I saw uh, your beautiful co-star, Carrie Washington, was on The View yesterday, Mm -hmm. and she was talking about uh, the fact that the playbills actually have some, like, literature for people now, so that people walking out of the theater can take the experience of this show, which is, which is a lot, um, and do something with it. And that's, I think that's one of the wonderful things about this play, is that it's a, it's a, it serves as a catalyst for discussion. Mm-hmm. And I think that's when what we do as artists can heal. Mm-hmm. And this play addresses, and it walks six, 360 degrees around this phenomenon. Yeah. And I think what I love about it more than anything is the fact that you get four perspectives yeah. in this play. 
Right. And I think everybody comes to this play with their own perspective, mm -hmm. but they leave with more than they came with. Mm -hmm. They leave with the perspective beyond their own. Right. And that's what's the catalyst for this discussion and why people leave this. I sign autographs after the show, and people are saying they can't wait to go talk to their neighbor about mm. it. And I say to them, you know, you, you leave these musicals, and you've got a song on your lips, mm. but you leave American Sun, Sun, and you've got something on your mind. Wow. And uh, I tell them, don't keep it to yourself. What you was know. the rehearsal process like? So it sounds like uh, as a cast, uh, you're also joined by Stephen Pasquale and Jeremy Jordan. Mm -hmm. um, it sounds like you did a lot of sort of digging in, in the script with each other, and there was a lot of talk about what you were doing. About, about nuance. Yeah. And, you know, there were also adjustments in the script in terms of rhythm, because, mm -hmm. you know, it's only a 90-minute play. And I don't actually I don't know if audience can take more than ninety minutes. I love a ninety minute play, by the way. Me too. It's like great. Yeah. Um, but 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 rhythms in a ninety minute play are important. You know what I mean? You 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 you've got to plot the narrative rhythmically and musically as well. But the nuance and stuff, you know, adjustments that we made in rehearsal with language had to do with with streamlining that story. It had to do with keeping that keeping it alive and and keeping that narrative developing, and uh, I think we did a pretty good job. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, Carrie Washington and Steve Pasquale play parents, and they're trying to figure out what's happening with their teenage son. Right. You are a lieutenant, Yep. a man of, uh, of, a, of a uniform. No, I wear a suit, man. Oh, yeah, that's right. You're a suit. I Jeremy Jordan's wear a suit. Right. I have a badge right. and a pistol. So, right. Uh, <laughs> yeah, but you, uh, what, what is it like to, to be playing a man of the law in this story? It's wonderful because I think most audiences don't expect me to be a black man. Yeah, mm. and that's one of the other things about this play that's great is that you know this the the surprises that because you're coming forth you're the, out of the cast you, when oh, you yeah, when you enter. I'm the last one. And Carrie jokingly says, you know, I love the way he just comes in at the end of the play and steals the show. <laughs> <laughs> right. I say, no, 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 no. You guys do all the heavy emotional lifting, and I just kind of come in and tie it up in a nice little bow. Mm -hmm. but, but I play Lieutenant John Stokes, who's a public affairs liaison officer for the right. Miami Police Department. And uh, he's a seasoned veteran. He's a Vietnam vet. Mm -hmm. He's done this, and he's by the book. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So how'd you get involved with the play? Did Kenny Leon have something to do with that, your director? Yeah, he called me and said, you want to do this play? Well, that was easy. <laughs> <laughs> and nice. you were like... Sure. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't even need to read it, as a matter of fact. Yeah. I just, I just said, yes. Well, when Kenny Leon says this is the role for you and it's on Broadway and these are your co-stars, I'm sure it's like, there you go. Yep. 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 I'm in. Yep. I'm in. Yep. And I'm in. You, do you live in New York? Were you? No, no, no. I didn't think so. No, I live in Texas, man. Okay. Where yeah. in Texas? In San Marcos, Texas. Okay. I got a couple of acres of land, you know, four dogs, a big old tractor, and a garden. Well, who's watching your dogs? My wife and my son. Good. Okay. Yeah. I'm glad. I'm worried about the dogs. Oh, me too. I miss them, man. You have oh, no it's idea. Hard. <laughs> it's hard. It's hard. I can't wait to get home because I get welcomed by 16 legs when I get home, if you know what I mean. So it's how great. long have you been in Texas? Oh, wow. Since 07. Okay. But I grew up in Texas. I, I'm, okay. I'm a Texan at heart. From Texas. But you lived in New York for a while, right? A while, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I worked here in New York for a long time ago. I've been around the world as an actor, man. I know. Yeah. I know. Yeah. So what um, what brought you to, when did you first come to New York? How old were you? And what was that guy like? Ooh, that guy was younger than I am. <laughs> <laughs> I figured. Uh, I came to New York after spending a little, spending a year in, in Los Angeles. Uh -huh. You know, when I graduated from college in Texas, I taught high school for four years. I worked in the early episodes of Dallas. Remember that TV series? I love Dallas. They shot it in Dallas. Oh, yeah. You're and on Dallas? I worked as an extra in the very first oh. five episodes oh, of Dallas. Oh, wow. Can I see you on, on screen if I really look? I never watched. <laughs> I, I, well, actually, I actually, I grew up with Dallas, but like two years ago, I binged it. I went back okay, okay. and watched it all again. So I'm going to... Do it for look a third for time and look for you. I'm <laughs> serving food at parties. Okay. My car is an extra. In the, <laughs> I <laughs> love it. Okay. Episodes, so. But I worked in I worked in movies like Semi Tough. I worked yeah. in uh, you know as an extra playing football in Dallas and uh, in '78 I got accepted in the NYU's MFA acting program. I, in one week between Monday and Friday, I got a letter of acceptance in the NYU's MFA acting program. I got a letter of acceptance into SMU's MFA acting program. Wow. I got accepted into South Texas Law School because I was going to go to law school at one mm -hmm. point. And I got a part in a movie. Ron Howard, remember him? Yeah. The very <laughs> <laughs> Still around. The very, the very first film he directed was a TV movie called Cotton Candy, oh. which was shot in Dallas, Texas. Oh, wow. OK. Uh, I was teaching high school at the time. Uh -huh. I resigned from teaching when I got cast in that. I didn't go to graduate school. I didn't go to law school. I shot that movie in Dallas, and I moved to LA wow. right after that. Yeah. Wow. I wow. worked in The White Shadow. I worked in Good Times. And then I came to New York. 
Wow. And I hooked up with the Negro Ensemble Company here. White Shadow and Good Times were both shows I watched as a kid. So oh, You yeah. saw me with my afro and all that I saw stuff. you with your afro. Yeah, yeah. I did. Back in the day. I miss your afro. Yeah, I do too sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the older I get, the straighter my hair is starting to get. That's really strange to me. And, <laughs> <laughs> and you've done a lot of TV and film um, and theater. And I, I'm sure a lot of people ask you about A Soldier's Play, right? Yes. Yeah. Why, why, what was interesting about that credit? Oh, man, that was... That was, that was a defining moment in my career. Mm. I mean, you know the cast that was in that. Yeah, in who that, was in that? Tom Denzel Washington, oh, Samuel guy. L. Jackson. Those guys. Just to name a few, yeah. a couple, and myself, and yeah. Brent Jennings, and Stephen Jones, and Cotter Smith, and mm. Peter, Peter Friedman, a wonderful cast, Stephen Zettler, um, Pulitzer Prize winning play. Yeah, uh, that was my first play in New York. Wow! As a matter of fact, wow! Yeah. You started, you started at like the best. Yeah, yeah. yeah don't get no better now. Yeah, yeah. I, I, um, you are very associated with August Wilson. I'm a huge August Wilson fan. I am August Wilson. And Gem of the Ocean actually uh, is the play that you did on Broadway of his, and I loved that production yeah. so much. I remember that. I remember the the set, mm -hmm. the visual, and Felice mm -hmm. Rashad, of course, was fantastic in it. But I remember it was. Isn't it the earliest in the deck? It's in the first. The, Right, because yeah. August Wilson, for those of you who don't know, wrote a play for each decade of the century, oh, this one, yeah. and that was for the, the early 1900s. 1902. 1902. In Pittsburgh. Uh, yeah. And it was a beautiful show. I love that. That must have been a, a really exciting production to be a part of. Another special moment, man. Yeah. You know, the, the, the storytelling and the truth that's, that August brings to his, his writing, the, the characters. You know, people go to see August Wilson plays, and they see their uncle. They mm. see their, their, their sister, they see themselves yeah. even more so. And they see these characters celebrated. And they see their strengths, they see their weaknesses, mm. they, see, they see their food, they see the dance. You know, what August brings culturally is just so rich and nuanced. It's just a joy to do it, man. What, so what was August like? Just like you and me, man. You know, he was, he was a very, I mean, my, my memory of him is a very simple man, a very intelligent man, a very mm. smart man, a very creative man. Uh, very giving man, mm -hmm. very sharing man, because you know I can I can still I have something in my wallet that that he gave me, if you know what mm -hmm. I mean. Uh, so he was a very giving, not just with his words and his storytelling, but with uh, with his time and and with his ideas and and I remember I'm a playwright as well. Yeah, I know. You know so I've had conversations with him, you know, on cigarette breaks in you know in rehearsals, and I'll never forget one of the most resonant things that he said to me was because he had read one of my plays that I had submitted to Lloyd at the at the O'Neill. Uh -huh. And uh, he said, yeah, I read your play, man. He said, uh, it's okay to let him talk. Mm. I, that just freed me up, if you know. I mean, it's just a simple little sentence, you know, because I, I, my characters were like crazy talking. <laughs> but, but they're very much like his, uh -huh, you know. Yeah. And, and, and what he said to me was, it's okay to let him talk. Huh. In fact, it's important that you let them talk. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's like a note, a yeah. succinct note. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So and didn't you actually play him? Yes. I, God, I wish I, I saw that show. You, so, well, I still was that, was that a one-man show? It's or? a one-man show. It's 110 minutes of What me. was it called? It's, it's like How I Learned What I Learned. Right. There's a much longer title than that, but I, we won't get into that. And, you, right and you did it where? Oh, God, I did it in Boston. I did it in Atlanta. I did it in Pittsburgh. Oh, wow. I, I did it it's at, hometown. I did it in Wilson. Bethesda at the, at the Roundhouse. Uh, those are the places I've done it so far. I, I'll do it. I'll, I'll ride You're ready to do it again? Lay down, yeah. Yeah? Yeah. I want to see it. I want you to see it. Yeah, what's I'll it like? It's based on, wh what is the structure of it? So it was created after his death, correct? It, correct. He did it actually first. Oh, he did? He, he actually did it in Seattle at Seattle Rep. Oh, okay. I, he, do have a, he, I do have a faint memory of that. He okay. did it first. He and Todd Kreidler, who was his assistant who wrote it with him, his uh -huh. dramaturg, they wrote it together. Ruben Santiago Hudson did it here okay. in New York, and then I came on board to do it in all the, on, right. in all the other cities. But it basically looks at that 20-year-old, 1965, that 20-year-old poet. You know, before he even wrote a single play. Yeah. But the play basically is, is a real wonderful glimpse at the inspiration for many of the characters in his plays. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I want to see you do the it. People in his, the people in his life as a young poet who inspired, uh -huh. you know, from his mother to the people on the streets and the jitney drivers and stuff like that. Yeah, it's a great play. So how many of those ten plays in the cycle have you been in? All but two and a half. <laughs> 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 I've done a reading of, of Ma Rainey. I've never done Ma Rainey. Okay. Um, and I've never done King Headley, and I've never done Seven Guitars. Do you have a favorite of them? Um, whichever one I'm doing at the time. Whichever one. Yeah. I mean, the, the, the language is so beautiful. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Huh. 
Yeah. I yeah. miss I miss uh, one of the exciting things about covering Broadway was when there was a new August Wilson play. Yeah. yeah. You know, yeah. it was it was always always amazing. Yes, so There's as a some playwright, Eugene Lee plays coming soon. I cool. Before. All right. Yeah. Good. I'm into that. Yeah. So as a playwright, um, what Christopher Demos Brown wrote mm-hmm. wrote this play. This is his Broadway debut. Mm-hmm. Um, I believe it's part of a trilogy, didn't he? I think he I did hear that. Yeah, I think yeah, it's yeah. like he there's yeah. a, he he envisions it as a larger thing. Um, what do you love about this play? What did, what did you react to in it, and and why do you think it's so powerful for people? I had a visceral reaction to this play when I first read it uh, because it's the truth, and I I don't know another way to say it. That's that's yeah. there, there's so many lies and myths that are floating around in in America these days. It's it's kind of wonderfully refreshing and important, I think, to yeah. get some truth. Mm-hmm. To get some honest truth, <laughs> and that's yeah. that's what's wonderful about this play. What's it been like getting to know Carrie Washington? Oh, she's great, man. You know, she's going deep with this. You know, I've never worked with her before, mm-hmm. and you know, and I got nothing but nothing but 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 proud pride in, yeah. in, in what I see her doing. She's working, man. Everybody on this play is working. I mean, I, this 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 play is is quite an emotional journey. Yeah, you know, not just for the audience, but but. Uh, yeah, there's some really nice work happening. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I love the rea- when I when I saw it. I love the reactions mm. in the in the house around me. Mm-hmm. I mean, people really are in it. You hear people choosing sides. I mean, you know, yeah. it's 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 amazing. I I've got probably one of the greatest exit lines that I've ever had in a play, and you know, but in 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 the, in the scenes that I have with Carrie, for example. I feel and hear audiences going back and forth. I'll say something, and they'll go, ooh, ooh. Right. And then she'll say something, and they'll go, well, maybe she's right. <laughs> <laughs> and that's what's wonderful about this play, I yeah. think, is, 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 uh, is everybody, for example, everybody can claim the son, mm. which I think is important. The uh-huh. fact that he's biracial, for example. Yeah. It's, it's, I think that's important. And I think Christopher laying this out the way he did so wonderfully well and so intricately nuanced Mm -hmm. that everything resonates and echoes days after you've seen the play Mm -hmm. and and then you know he just lays these these wonderful little things in your mind and keeps going and then says okay now go home and think about that yeah yeah Fantastic. Yeah. Uh, hey, Caitlin, yes. what are the people online saying? Oh, people got lots of questions. So our first question is, since you are the last of the four to make your entrance, what do you do off stage while you're waiting for your oh, cue yeah. in the show? Oh, I listen to the play. <gasps> mm. You're in it. You're yeah. like just oh, yeah, I can't. I can't sit up in my dressing room. And <laughs> <laughs> you're, not wild, you're not binging something on Amazon Prime? Or, no, you know? I'm not. No, I'm no. sitting listening to the play. It's, yeah, I, it's kind of like getting on the freeway. You know, mm-hmm. I need to know what those other cars are doing before I get out there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's just, just, just me, my old work ethic, man. I come from that. Listening yeah. from your dressing room over the speaker? Oh, no, my dressing room's on the fourth floor. Oh. <laughs> it ain't you, that kind of party. You gotta hide. <laughs> so wait, that means you're off in the wings? I'm, on, I'm off stage left, yeah. Oh, wow. You know. that, wow, that's interesting. That's interesting. Next time I see it, I'm going to picture you over there all the yeah, time. Yeah, I'll, I'll be sitting right <laughs> over there. <laughs> By the way, it rains on the side. It's amazing. Yeah, I sit back and watch the rain. Yeah, it's, 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 watch it's, the it's, rain. It's, 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 very One strange. night you just run through the rain. Be like, who's that crazy person in the rain? It's like, <laughs> that's ah, with the, with don't the give me ideas, on. man. There's, there's a car back there too, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so much happening back there. Okay, another question is: so why do you feel so connected? Do you know you've worked? You talked a lot about working with August Wilson, but what is one thing that you feel super connected to him, or why you keep going back to his work? And he's celebrating me mm. in many ways, and I think that's important. You know. Uh, uh, yeah, I hear people ask about uh, having happy endings to plays, mm-hmm. if you know what I mean, and mm-hmm. that's not always the case. It, but but because August has written so many plays, mm-hmm. there's room for some happy endings in some of in some of his plays, so he doesn't have to be as as uh, as harsh necessarily as as, as as sometimes is. I don't know. August is August is important. He's America's playwright in so many ways. Mm-hmm. He 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 speaks. He speaks to all Americans. He is mm-hmm. an American playwright, and his characters are American characters, and uh, that's important to me. Yeah. Did that answer the question? Absolutely. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. Good. <laughs> Good. Oh, and this, uh, uh, a few people want to know what it was like. Uh, you once played baseball legend Willie Mays. Yes. So people would like to know a little bit more about that experience. <laughs> I am Willie Mays in the O.J. Simpson story. Mm-hmm. Oh, right. Yeah. That's right. I didn't know if anybody ever saw that movie. As a matter of fact, they made that, they shot that movie before the trial. Oh, wow. wow. I got a script one day called White Bronco. 
Yes. And my wife says to me, you're not going to do that, are you? I said, they don't want me to play OJ. <laughs> They want me to play Willie Mays. Willie Mays. When am I going to get a chance? How does Willie Mays fit into the OJ story? Willie, uh, San Francisco, where where mm. OJ grew up, oh. and uh, Willie knew his football coach. Wow! So I had several scenes with the young OJ, driving <laughs> him around in my Cadillac and taking him up to my house to talk about character. Mm. As you're getting, well, anyway, we saw how much good that did. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. But that was that was it. Was really kind of fun. It was you know it's to to play. I am Willie Mays. That's uh -huh. that's special. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah. Love that. And we can do one more question. And what is your most favorite thing about being an American son right now? Ooh, I'm on Broadway. Yes. <laughs> Heck you know, yeah. Yeah. I'm, I just well, what does Broadway mean? You work you work all over the place, but what? And obviously, you have a life in Texas now. What does it yeah. mean to be back in New York and to actually be walking on a Broadway stage every night? The legitimacy that your work gets. Being mm -hmm. on Broadway, if yeah. you know what I mean. That's mm -hmm. that's it. This is the pinnacle in, in the United States. If you you know, if it, this is this is the top. This is the top shelf. Mm -hmm. So yeah, this is where I want to be, uh, not just as an actor, but as a writer too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. I love that. Yeah, me too. <laughs> uh, I can't wait to see your plays. Okay. And so how long are we in American Sun? How long is that? Until January 27th. Right. Yeah. Okay. At the Booth Theater. Yeah, at the Booth Theater. It's, that, it's a beautiful theater, too. It is. I love that it's theater. It's fun to see. It's, I love seeing intimate experiences on Broadway. I was going to say, it's nice and intimate. You don't have to work too hard, if you know what I mean, in terms of projection and all that other stuff. Yeah. It's, uh, it's great. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. So happy you came in. Thank you for having me, man. Everyone, yeah. check out American Sun at yeah, the Booth. Yeah, don't miss it. Through January. Yeah. Caitlin, why don't you take us out? Thank you guys so much for tuning in today. We are live at 5 every single day. You can listen to us in a podcast form by searching for hashtag live at 5 and hitting that subscribe button. Be sure to tune in on Monday. We talk to Ryan Spahn of Off-Broadway's Daniel's Husband.